everybody. Welcome back to the Zacchaeus Tree Channel here. Uh, we have ourselves what seems like a pretty straightforward, easy go, cut it down and go home kind of a job, but it's a little bit more complex than that. So what we're doing here today is taking down this cherry tree. It's got the main stem here and it's got kind of a big limb that comes off the bottom here and it's way up on this hill and the camera will never do any of this justice, but it's a little bit complex because it wants to lean towards the house and it can reach. I know it doesn't look like it in this shot and it's also got some back lean and it's just, it's all over the place. The stump also kind of takes a twist in it at the bottom and it kind of puts center gravity over a different way too. So I'm gonna crawl up there real quick and I'll show you guys what we got. <laughs> Boy, walking up this hill is a chore. But uh, what we got going on here is uh, our cherry tree here. And uh, here's the big limb on this side I was talking about. So that's gonna be pretty easy. Just chop it and drop it and let it fall down there. Not a big deal. Right here is kind of a ridge. So you gotta be careful. We don't want stuff to hit at an angle and go rolling and, and kind of get crazy. Uh, Cause it is just a bunch of erosion down there. So it's a really sharp ridge. So we'll knock this off right here. Then we'll go up there. I think the best thing is just gonna be to piece out this canopy and let stuff fall. We we're trying to look at different ways to do it. Just a couple pieces to kind of make things go faster. And there's no real safe, sure answer that we're good about. So I think that's what we'll do. Then this tree has a bunch of back lean. We kind of would like to send the log down the hill that way because they're gonna try and use it. And I think that's the easiest way that they can get it out. Uh, they want to mill it, which I don't know how that well that'll work out for them. There's probably a ton of reaction wood since it's got all this lean to it. but. I think that's gonna be the strategy. We'll try to pull the log over that way. And I think that'll go well once we have the weight out of the top. So I'm gonna get up in a tree. We'll start chopping and dropping. Real quick before I head up this tree, I wanna show you guys a little bit more of why we can't fall this hole. Cause that was my initial impression when I got here is I could send the whole thing over the hill. So from this angle here, you can see it's got a little bit of a side lean. I don't know if you can see, but the house roof pokes through the brush right over there. And so it leans in that direction. So to help illustrate how much of a side lean it's got, I got my throw line here kind of as a plumb. And so that is gonna hang vertical and you can see how much of a side lean that has for that kind of a cut. And that just wouldn't really work real well for sending it over there. It is cherry and cherry holds on really good. It might work, but it's not something I'm gonna take a risk with. All right, we're gonna dump this huge limb off of here. As you can see, it is not in good shape. There's some structural, de oh, oh, was that just poop or was that fungus? Hopefully that was fungus. There's some big uh, structural stuff going on in here. Looks like some woodpecker damage is being healed over, something like that. So it's probably not gonna come off of here real smooth, but it's gonna come down between those two hackberries, hit that ridge and just, it's got a long way to fall. So it'll be kind of fun to watch here. We made a pretty shallow face just because I didn't want to compromise too much of the structure because the top side isn't real good. And I don't think this bar is barely going to be long enough to get through there. Maybe we'll bore it and just see what she looks like. And actually the bar is too short and you can tell by the way, oh no it's poking out there. Perfect. You can tell by the way that saw went through that this piece is hollow, or at least real soft in the center. I slid around the other side here. I got my cut peeking through there. I don't know if there's enough good wood on the top side to hold this to make a nice hinge before that releases, but we're gonna try. We're not in a position of danger. It's not gonna hit us if it comes off. Okay, so now our bar should be able to reach all the way through. I'm gonna slide around and finish everything from the top side here. Of course, I hope I only had one saw with me. <laughs> All 
right, we got a decent hinge there made. I don't know if you guys can see all the way through there, but I'm happy enough with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this cut on the top side, just like so, right below that cut. So that way my saw doesn't get stuck and go with the piece. Well, even when you do it a certain, you know, the right way, it doesn't always go to plan. I guess that hinge was simply too fat. It's embarrassing, but at least it didn't go too wrong in a bad way that messed anything up. Let me cut this stub off. I went ahead and cut the rest of that splinter off of there. I don't think it's quite clear, but I can see it in the saw marks that the hinge was about this wide. So it's not like it was a massive hinge. It wasn't inappropriately large. It was just on the larger size of what was going on there. I think that part of that splitting off like that was due to the nature of the wood and then also partially due to the fact that this is where all the structural integrity in the limb was and this up here wasn't doing a whole lot. So let that be a lesson for someone, at least a lesson for me, hopefully for someone else as well. We got ourselves up to the next limb here. This one's much smaller, easy peasy. You won't have a problem just conventional notching and back cutting. Here's a chance for me to redeem myself after that other large limb snafu. Uh, I'm gonna cut this one off of here. It's gonna fall. We're gonna try and get it between the maple and the sycamore limb. It might do a little bit of damage to both, but uh, that's acceptable for our scenario here with the customer. It's got some of those limbs that hook around that way. I'm hoping to fit those just beyond the maple. I think it'll work or it'll be real close. We'll see. But I'm gonna use the same strategy that I did last time. I'm gonna set myself up with a notch on the bottom bore through and then finish with the back strap i'm gonna thin my notch up my hinge up a little bit just to make things a little bit more reliable i do have my tie over here i might even take my flip line off of this just to make sure if something does peel and go wrong i don't die we got some structural inconsistency on the top side here like we did down there not as bad but it's still present so something to consider <laughs> in my mouth that uh that did some damage there did more than i was hoping for that tree will probably recover it's just a forest tree at this point in fact it's actually up on that ridge and it'll probably wash out before it recovers but everything up here went to plan um so we can be thankful for that our hinge was a good size it didn't split off and everything worked out good there the sycamore branch did pretty good we're happy for that that's more important than that maple in my mind uh we just could only work with what the tree gave us there. We were just hoping for a little too much, apparently. All right, I'd like to take these two branches independently, mostly because they're just kind of spread out over a spot that might do more damage if I take them together. So I'm gonna try and get this one to come away from the sycamore a little bit. We might get enough to kind of miss it. We'll see. And then this one, I'm gonna try and get to go the other way a little bit and hopefully it'll land down there next to the big saw, which will be in a different spot by then. Oh, yeah. out really good I don't think my sizzle did anything there these fibers didn't separate at all but I thought I'd throw it in there just in case it might help nice I don't think we did any damage to that tree over there that oak held up pretty good all right we're up here in the top of this thing or at least it's close to the top as we're gonna get. We're gonna cut this limb off and send it that way. It'll clear everything up here, I think for the most part. And this one, we're gonna try and do like that one down there and try to get it to come away from the, from the sycamore a little bit just to keep things a little better shaped. 
Alrighty, I forgot to hit the film button. I'm sorry guys, I forgot to record it. So I just did a standard like drop cut, undercut, top cut, and went down. But first, it knocked a couple twigs off that tulip tree, but nothing bad, nothing bad at all. I would call that a win. <laughs> it but it didn't break it we like that all right last time we got to this big top it leans way out over the bank so it's gonna fall a long way and uh it'd be pretty cool pretty cool for this area anyway <laughs> so far it was just in the air for so long okay now at this point the stem is, is quite obvious it leans primarily in that direction so we could probably fit it all the way down through there but what you can't see from up here is that all of that is a really steep side slope and there's a good chance it's going to want to roll down towards the house we could probably tie the butt off but i think it's just as easy and less risky to send a couple chunks off and then pull the log over opposite as lean down towards the creek down there. We'll go right past that sycamore limb. And uh, then they'll have better access to the log anyway because this slope over here isn't nearly as treacherous and ridiculous to climb. This is all like collapsed erosion or collapsed bank that's due to erosion. So it's like nigh and walkable. Who uses the word nigh? Why did I even just say that? <laughs> Threw a bunch of mud on the house. I never would have guessed. I about my my life went before my eyes there. Yeah, hey, look, it splattered the window. Wow, I'm gonna have to do something about that. Alrighty, so we got our pull rope tied on. We're gonna get down out of the tree now, and we're gonna pull this thing against its lean. All right, we got everything set up to pull this stub over. It's all the way up on the hill there, right there. You can see it. We got a rope tied in the top of it. It comes all the way down to a block over there. Then we got it stretched all the way out to the back of the pickup here. We're going to go up there and make our cuts. Go ahead and hop in a truck. You can, yeah, go ahead and put it in drive. And it's already got some pretension on it, so I want you to just stay on the brake. Don't get any tighter. We got enough pretension to lift the rope off the ground and over that long span, that's that's a good bit. So uh, just be ready and waiting, and I'll start the back cut, and then I'll let you know when I need a little more pull. We'll see, once we get up to the hinge, we'll see if it wants to sit back on the saw and that will tell us where our tension is.
Okay, go ahead. Nice and slow. Keep going, keep going. Perfect. <laughs> that was epic. It just barely missed our sycamore limb, which was perfect. Definitely uh, figured out a couple small hackberries. I think the log stayed intact, which is great. That's what we needed. Wow, there was a ton of decay in that hinge. So the way we were looking here, we had a little bit of side weight this direction. You can see this fiber pole on this side was probably the only thing I was keeping that up. There's, you know, a couple inches here of good sapwood, and that was it. I kind of knew that might be the case based on some of the decay that was in here. Uh, kind of thought there'd be some decay based on this hole under the stump and just kind of the condition of the rest of the tree. So this here, you can see this is the compression side of the hinge and the tension side of the hinge. This hinge was probably actually a little bit thick still for just a stick without canopy weight in it, but it did the trick. Even some of the decayed stuff had some fiber to it. So I'm pretty happy with how that went. That's a, a good finish for how the rest of the tree is gone. It's been a little bit less than perfect. I don't enjoy those days. I don't think anybody does, but I share them because I think it's important to know that we're all human. And when you see other people editing themselves to look like perfectionists or to look like they have a perfect record, it can be really discouraging sometimes in your own daily work. So I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. And uh, all we can do is do the best we can and put the appropriate amount of effort into getting better every day. The last quick thing is that this has got to be the farthest I've ever had a tree end up from where I cut it from. It stumps all the way up there and this stick ended up all the way down here. <laughs> That's quite a joy. Hey guys, this is Future Zach coming back to react about that little experience there. Wow, that was crazy. I am so glad that wasn't worse. I definitely thought that piece of wood was gonna go right through the side of that house. And uh, I consider it a blessing from above that it didn't, but I'm just really glad it didn't get any worse. So I wanted to break down how exactly that happened. Obviously the piece came off, it landed just right on the nose and then went end over end on down the hill and just was really bad. Um, I think what the root cause of that was, ever since I cut that limb off at the beginning of the video and it, it's kind of splintered off there, I let that get to me. And so I just, ever since that limb, I was just more interested in being done than, you know, doing the task ahead of me, the one right in front of me safely. And so I just let that throw my focus and I neglected to consider the possibility of a piece going end over end down that hill. It just goes to show how important it is to deal with your mistakes appropriately and not let them affect the rest of your work for the rest of the day. I mean, thankfully this all worked out good. It wasn't a big deal. There weren't any real heavy consequences but that kind of mistake can also kill somebody. And so that's not stuff that we can afford to be doing. Not at all. We don't get second chances with stuff like that. In the end, I'm very thankful it wasn't any worse than it was. All we ended up doing was that log as it went over, end over end, picked up a huge chunk of mud and plastered it right on the side of the house in the air conditioning unit. But it just covered the window and thankfully it didn't break the window. I heard it thump from all the way up in the tree and I thought for sure it would have broke that window. The customer wasn't upset with us, they were totally understanding and I could not be more appreciative of that. I really appreciate you guys watching. This was kind of a cool project up on this hill here. Nothing too technical, but uh, it was just fun to share. If you could like the video, it doesn't cost you anything and it definitely helps the channel. And if you like this kind of content, go ahead and subscribe. We make a lot of videos just like this and it's, Good fun. I enjoy them. I hope you do too. We'll catch you on the next one.